Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Alan Partridge, Adobe eLearning Evangelist. Today I thought we'd have some fun with blocks. You know, when I work with students, often one of the most difficult concepts for them to begin to understand is layout and composition. And this is because often they don't have a foundation to begin with. So I thought today we'd just take a quick look at some of the major design errors and design concepts that can help to guide you and uh, warn you about the various problems and the potential solutions that can be of use as you begin to put your multimedia content together in your e-learning project. Here's a fairly typical example of ineffective layout in a slide. You can see that in this case an attempt has been made to align the various objects and groups on the slide to the outermost edges of the slide. A much better solution is to align the groups and objects to the inside toward the other groups and objects so that everything fits together like the pieces of a puzzle. Likewise, be certain to avoid trapped white space. This open area here in the middle is an example of that. Depending on how many objects or groups of objects you have on your slide, you may find that it becomes difficult to watch carefully to make sure that you don't trap the space in the middle. But if you're careful to keep channels, little gullies all the same width between each of the major objects or groups, then you'll find that you don't have any instances of trapped white space. Another common error is to try to put too many things on one single slide. A good rule of thumb is to try to keep it to only three major groups or ideas represented on any given slide. So just count the big ideas or the big groups or clusters and try to avoid going with more than three on a single slide. Color plays a significant role in the effectiveness of your slide. That's why it's important that if you do choose a color which stands out, which is quite different than the colors around it, that you are aware that it will cause the eye to focus on that area in particular. It's also generally best practice to choose a fairly narrow palette of colors, colors which are similar to one another, colors which would be viewed as all very close to one another or that could be obtained by only mixing a small amount of darkness or lightness or even a small amount of an, another color inside of those colors in order to get a nice clean narrow palette. Just as a significant difference in hue will cause the eye to focus on that specific area of your overall slide, a significant difference in the tint, the lightness or darkness of the color, uh, can cause the exact same effect if it is significantly darker or lighter than the rest of the palette. Here's a simple example that conforms to the principles we've described so far. There's clear channeling between the objects. The objects are all aligned on the page. They're balanced from left to right. The balance in this case is asymmetrical. All of the items are in the same basic color palette, and there are no more than three groups or clusters of items on the screen. You'll note that there are two of the small mid-tone blocks, but because both are the same size and are in the same basic location, the eye reads them as a single entity or group. Here's another successful approach, in this case one that uses symmetrical balance, where both sides, left and right, are mirrored exactly. This example is also successful. There is asymmetrical balance in terms of the color, and symmetrical balance in terms of the shapes. There are only three major ideas or shapes or groups on the slide. Now let's complicate things a little bit. In this case, the slide has several independent small objects. However, because of the repetition of those forms, and because they're all in close proximity, they all become a single entity, visually a group. So this slide actually contains only three clusters or groups. Of course, in real-world e-learning projects, we have to apply these principles to things other than simple blocks. In this case, I've replaced the bottom block with text. You'll notice, however, that the text is now conflicting with the background. 
The background and the text are similar colors, and the heavy pattern in the background is problematic in terms of legibility of the text. Legibility must be your first concern, so the background must either change or you must add something to the area behind the text in order to make the text more legible. Once you lighten the background, you can see clear contrast in the text. It's very important to remember that the size of the characters, as well as the contrast between the light and dark tones, should help to make the text highly readable, assuming that your learner may have difficulty seeing precisely what is on the screen at any given time. You'll also notice that the text is left justified. This is generally best practice when working with text. Finally, I've replaced the other blocks on the screen with an image and symbols, which will help to more closely approximate the kinds of things which might appear in a real project. It's worth noting that when you add images, buttons, and other elements to your project, you should ensure that they are directly relevant to the learning materials in the slide. But that's a topic for a, another presentation altogether.